With the JavaScript fetch API, most people incorrectly assume that you can just start parsing JSON from the response, but you can't do that. Here's one gotcha that you need to look out for. All right, so this is typically the way we write fetch requests. Now this is using node fetch, which is a polyfill, but matches the JavaScript fetch API in the browser. So in this case, what we do is we call fetch, we pass it a URL. I like async await. So we await that, we get the response and immediately we assume, hey, let's just take this response and convert it to JSON because that's the majority of things that we're doing is receiving JSON data. So then we get that, we assign it to a variable, which in this case should be renamed to Bulbasaur. I don't know if anyone else is a Pokemon fan. That was a huge part of my life growing up, which is a ton of fun, whatever. But so then we log this data out and everything works. And we also were handling any errors. Now the errors is interesting. I would expect that if the status of the request, the fetch request is not 200, that it would trigger this error. So let's say it's a 404, for example, not found. I would expect this to be triggered down here. But as we'll see in a second, that isn't the case. So let's say we type in a name of a Pokemon that uh, doesn't exist. But let's call this developer uh, Saurus. All right. That's a Pokemon that doesn't exist, right? So what actually happens in here? Well, we get an error and it's not the error that I would have expected, which is handled inside of the catch. It's actually an error in handling this response and trying to convert it to JSON. So again, I would expect if this returns a 404 for it to trigger an error, but it's not actually considered an error unless it's a status of 500. So all of the other ones return in here what seem like successfully, but then give you access to the actual status that's returned for you to, to investigate, did this actually come back in the way that we expect? So what you wanna check, and we can log this in here, we can log out the res.status. So we make the request, and we see here we get a status of 404. Well, that's our cue that we need to do something and not try to parse the response as JSON. So we could check something like if the res.status does not equal 200, we might want to do something else. So we could just say return. So we skip that extra bit of logic below and we're not actually inside of a function. So actually a return doesn't make sense. So let's just do the opposite of we're only going to try to get a uh, Bulbasaur or in this case, developer -saurus. Let's use that name just cause it's fun. So we're only trying to get the JSON data if the status is a 200. Now, in this case, you would probably want to uh, log out the failed request or something. But the primary thing is the mistake that people make, including myself all the time, is assuming that we don't have to do any other checks in here other than just converting this response to JSON. But you need to double check that the response that comes back is an appropriate response, something like 200. And if it's something else, you need to handle those accordingly as well. Now, lastly, just to show you how you trigger the error down here, let's uh, log out something that will be a little bit uh, readable to us. So this should be pretty obvious. That won't trigger right now, but if we call a domain that doesn't exist like this, I don't think that's a real domain with that route. We now see that our error is logging out. So it is handling that, but for statuses like 400, 404, et cetera, you need to be checking those and make sure you're getting a 200 before you start to parse your data into JSON. So hopefully this is helpful. This has been a nitpick of mine for a long time where I don't think it's immediately obvious. And I think it's really easy to get tripped up on this if you're not really paying attention. Now, really quickly, a shout out for me. I just released a course on Astro, which is one of my favorite frameworks. It's super powerful front end and back end are building full stack applications but I just released a full course where we build a super powered markdown blog that uses Tailwind CSS, TypeScript, Zeta database, Cloudinary for automatically generating images. And we add uh, authentication, a basic auth strategy, as well as a bunch of other stuff inside of here, including deploying to Netlify and Vercel. So if you're interested in learning everything you'd wanna know about one of the coolest, most exciting frameworks in JavaScript, which is Astro, uh, go and check out the course at astrocourse.dev. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I'll catch you back for another video in the future. Thanks as always for checking it out and I'll catch you later.